How can I graph and identify key features of exponential functions, including domain, range, average rate of change, y-intercept, or x-intercept, y-intercept, and horizontal asymptote? A geometric sequence is a type of exponential function. We've talked about them previously. We have a sub n equals the first term, a sub 1, times the common ratio to the n minus 1 power, where n is the term you're looking for, right? So that's a type of exponential function. But in a more general sense, exponential functions can address a wider variety. We generally write it something like f of x equals a, which is your initial value. Um, and then you have a base, which is what we, what we call the common ratio uh, that we are going to be multiplying by, and then an exponent. b is always going to be greater than 0, and it really shouldn't be 1. Because if b is 1, you just basically stay with your initial value the whole time, because 1 to any exponent is always going to be 1. So you're just multiplying a by 1, in which case you just get a straight horizontal line. So b really shouldn't be 1. That's just a horizontal line when you graph it. And it's always going to be greater than 0 um, in the case here. So some of these words that were mentioned at the beginning. We mentioned the domain, the range, the average rate of change, the x and the y intercepts, the horizontal asymptotes. So the domain is basically just the, all of your x values. What are they? What are your possibilities? The range is all your y values. What are those possibilities, right? The average rate of change is base, is you just take two points on the graph and you figure out what the slope of a straight line between those two points is. That's it. There's no, it's just what it would be the slope between any two points on the graph it would be the average rate of change. Your x-intercept and y-intercepts are where the graph would cross the x and y axes, or if it even does, it might be none. Horizontal asymptote is a horizontal line that the graph approaches but never actually crosses. So you'll see here as I get into some of these graphs. So now let's kind of shift gears to talk about current events, the coronavirus. You may have heard that term exponential function. So let's say hypothetically we have this idea that you have this, this disease or virus. And let's say we each interact with three people a week. So it starts with me. And I picked three um, arbitrarily. I don't. I picked that because I have three other members of my family, right? So if I interact with three people, first week I have it. Then the next week, three people get it. Three more. Three more people get it. And then the next week, each one of those people interacts with three people. So then you're at, they they infect nine more people. And each one of those people interacted with three more people in the course of the next week. So now you're up to twenty seven. So this is where you get, like, if you look at this, this looks like a geometric sequence. 1, 3, 9, 27. You're multiplying by 3 each time. So how you would write this as an exponential function is f of x equals a to the b, uh, equals a times b to the x. In this case, 1 is the first, is the number of people initially infected. 3 is the number of people that came in contact with them when I multiply by each time, and x would be the number of weeks. So f of x, I can just multiply by the 1, x, f of x equals 3 to the x. And there's my exponential function for this case. Now when I graph this, um, I didn't indicate your average rate of change on here, but I'll talk about that. However, in here we have, we have f of x equals 3x. When I graph this function, um, because my b value, the base, is greater than 1, you know it's increasing. You can always look at that base. If that value is greater than 1, it's increasing. If it's 1, it's a straight line. And if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to be decreasing. But since it's greater than 1, I'm increasing. And you can see the function on the graph here is going up. The y-intercept is where x is 0. So when I put 0 in for x, 3 to the 0 equals 1. So my y-intercept is 1. If I have a lot of exponential functions in this standard form, it's kind of called the parent function sometimes, your y-intercept is always going to be 1. The x-intercept in this case, there isn't 1, because when I set the f of x equal to 0, or the y equal to 0, 0 cannot possibly, there's no x value for an exponent that would make turn 3 to the x to 0. So since there isn't a value, it will never cross the x-axis. Which actually, that is the asymptote. That's the line, y equals 0. My y value is 0. The x-axis there 
is the horizontal asymptote that this graph will approach, but never cross. Um, so it will never cross there. And if you think about that, that makes sense in terms of whenever I keep raising a number to an exponent, like three, and as x gets smaller and x gets negative, more and more negative, so three to the negative two, that really equals th one over three to the two, right? You just put it, the properties of exponents say it's one over three to the two. So basically I'm putting one over three squared, and as I continue to get more and more negative, this exponent gets greater and greater, so it's one over a larger and larger denominator, perpetually getting smaller and smaller, but never actually getting to zero. The domain, once I've graphed this function, it acts all numbers possible for x from negative infinity up to positive infinity. However, for the range, it never hits zero, so zero is my low end of the range, and I go all the way up to positive infinity for the high end. Now, average rate of change. What you would do is you would basically take two points. So I could take my y-intercept, and then I could say, okay, what's, what's the value when x equals 1? So x is 1, and it will always tell you what range of x. So it could say from x is 0 to 1. So when x is 1, 3 to the 1 is 3, so y would be 3, so it would be 1 comma 3. Now I would just take these two points and I do change in y over change in x. Like it was a line that connected those two. And that's all I would do. So the change in y is from 1 to, th or let's go from 3 to 1. 3 to minus 1 is 2, so it would be 2 over, and 1 minus 0 is 1, 2. So for this, from x is 0 to x is 1, the average rate of change would be 2. And that's how you calculate that. All right. So if I had another situation, this situation, it's talking, it's another exponential function. The situation is referring to like garbage consumption. It says um, on the average person makes about 1,200 pounds of garbage a year. We want to decrease that by 2%. So when you decrease by 2%, 1% would just be 1 or 100% would be one that would keep it the same but if i want to decrease it i take two percent away so i want to have 98 percent of the original amount so that's where the 0.98 came from i took away two hundredths or two percent from 100 percent and then i put that to the x times the number of years so because b is less this b value is less than one it's decreasing i know it's less than one because i'm and i also think about i'm trying to lower the amount of garbage my y-intercept is always going to be zero, and then it's usually going to be this number here, the initial value. The initial value, and how do I know that? If I put in zero for x, 0 0.98 to the zero power, anything to the zero power is one, and then I do one times 1,200, and I get 1,200. So I can put that on my graph, and I can sketch it. You can see this graph looks different than the other one because it's going down. Now, there's no x-intercept again because Basically, if I put in 0 here, that means that 1,200 times 0.98 to the x has to equal 0. 1,200 doesn't equal 0, so 0.98 to the x has to equal 0. Well, how do, There's no exponent you can raise a number to and get 0. Because of that, there's no x-intercept. There's no exponent possible to get the y value of 0, which means my asymptote is going to be the same as the previous one, where y equals 0. My domain will include all the possible negative values and all the possible positive values for x, even though it's not realistic. You cannot, can't travel backwards in time. Um, so in the scenario, when x is representing a time, you can obviously understand the realistic nature. But the domain of the actual function would be negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, again, your asymptote is 0, so it's going to go from 0 up to positive infinity. You, again, could, choose, could calculate the average rate of change, but in this video, I'm going to elect to not do that. So another type of exponential function, or another way to think about it, I guess, is if you think about it as y equals a, your initial value, times a base raised to your exponent plus k, where k is actually the horizontal asymptote. And in all the examples I've given you so far, k was zero and our horizontal asymptote was zero, right? But k could have a value, and that'll kind of shift this. And k could be a negative number, in which case you'd probably see subtraction instead. And that's what I'm gonna throw at you here for this first example, and I'm gonna work through this right in the video here. So y equals two times 1.5 to the x minus four. 
So I can tell if this is increasing or decreasing by looking at the B value here, and B is greater than one, so I'm increasing. All right, so that tells me the graph is gonna look something like this, right? It's gonna approach a horizontal asymptote on the bottom, it's gonna increase. And what's that horizontal asymptote? Well, that's gonna be, wait, not four, but negative four. Y equals negative four. So down here on my graph, I probably wanna indicate one, two, three, four. I want to indicate where negative four is, and I'm going to approach that. My question now is, what's my y-intercept? So my y-intercept would be when x is zero. So if I do two times 1.5 to the zero would be one minus four. So two times one is two. Two minus four is negative two. And if I look at this, I know I'm going to approach that negative four down here but this means I'm gonna have an x-intercept. So I finally have one with an x-intercept because I've kind of shifted it down, right? So now I, for my x-intercept, I have to set zero equal to two times 1.5 to the x minus four. So you can add four to both sides and you would divide by two. So this would be four divided by two would equal 1.5 to the x. And then you'd end up with two, so you could figure out, you could take some time to guess what 1.5 to what exponent would equal two. Now this is pretty tricky to do um, in terms of figuring that out. And quite honestly, I'm not gonna ask you to do that. So if you get to a situation like this, like probably not that important what the x-intercept is, we're not looking for it. But you can still sketch the graph I know it's gonna intersect x, but let's not label that. So we can kind of say, we don't know exactly, right? This would be 1.5 to whatever exponent will give you two. There is a mathematical way to do that. We're not gonna be covering that in this video. So I'm not worried about it. So we have this asymptote down here. We wanna say we're approaching that. And now we have this graph, which we can visually see our domain is gonna be all the negative values and all the positives. So negative infinity, Wow, that was poorly written to positive infinity for x. And then my range would be negative 4 from negative 4 up to positive infinity for my y values. Um, you could substitute in to get a second coordinate, or once we figure it, if you wanted to figure out the y-intercept, you could substitute in 1, figure that out, have your two points, and calculate your rate of change as well. Let's do another one, kind of run through these steps. We'll see if we need to worry about the x, if it's something easy to calculate for this one or not. But, um, so let's go through here. Well, first thing, let's see increasing or decreasing. My b value is less than one, it's 0.8, so we're decreasing. My y-intercept would be when x is zero. So when x is zero, this is one. Three times one is three, plus two is five. So my y-intercept is five. Let me put an equal sign on that, so this would be 5. And my asymptote's going to be 2. So logically, knowing what these graphs look like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so let's say 2 is down here, let's draw a little dotted line. Knowing what these graphs know, look like and knowing it's decreasing, I'm going to be decreasing to approach this asymptote, which means there's not going to be an x-intercept, so none. There won't be one. For this one, the domain would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. And my range would be from two all the way up to positive infinity. And that's how we would figure that out. Again, I did tell you how it can identify the that graph and identify key features of exponential functions, including domain and range. We did talk about the average rate of change. Rewind if you want to see that again. It's basically drawing a line, figuring out the slope. X-intercept, which we don't use that often. The Y-intercept is the more important value. And our horizontal asymptote, and we talked about figuring that out. But if you can do this and this, you can generally sketch the graph and probably figure out where your domain and range would be.